So our first um, mini presentation is by Siri Timeless. Um, the presentation is Exploring Historical Reality Virtually, the Roca Sorrentina Project. And so I will let Siri take it away whenever you are ready. Okay, can you all hear me? I had thought maybe I would use a speakeasy as well as using voice, but I think it's going to be easier for me if I just do it without the speakeasy, if that's okay with people. You can always come back and hear the talk again because they're going to put the um, uh, a stone with audio right outside my talk here. This talk is starts and it will end with the exhibit in the exhibit hall in back of me. It's called The Aeronauts, 18th Century Ballooning and the Beginnings of Flight. We, and by this I mean my good friend and collaborator Jeff Giuliarano and I, are proud that this exhibit was chosen as the inaugural show in the UCM exhibit hall here at San Jose State. Of course, the subject matter of the exhibit fits with the steampunk look and feel of this year's conference. But I suspect that the real reason I was asked by the conference organizers to say a few words about the exhibit and about why it was created is that it is a product of the Roca Sorrentina project in Second Life. For those of you who are not familiar with Roca Sorrentino, it truly is an exploration of reality, in this case historical reality, using a virtual environment. Roca Sorrentina and its adjoining open ocean region, the Bay of Naples, have been built as an immersive living and learning experience in a historically plausible late 18th century southern Italian community. The year there is 1785, and we are always exactly 230 years behind the times. And for those of you who are rusty on their history, it is the Age of Enlightenment. In other words, the era that gave us the ideas and principles of modern science and the philosophy behind the American Revolution um, and um, much, much more. And it's also the age of the Grand Tour when people all over Europe and even from the newly formed United States would vacation by seeing all the most important historical and cultural sites in Europe. Although fictitious, Roca Sorrentina sits geographically near two of those grand tour destinations, the city of Naples, Italy, and Mount Vesuvius, which erupted regularly during the 18th century. What makes Roca Sorrentina uh, a little bit different from most of the historical regions in Second Life is that as we build and change our island, and as we plan our activities, we base everything on as much historical research as possible. We use books and other printed materials from the era, secondary sources, pictures and items from museum collections to inform our work. Moreover, we provide our community members the opportunity to engage in what we call collaborative self-directed learning through their participation in our activities and by encouraging them to plan and lead activities based on their own research. Let me give you some examples. There are a number of informal gathering spots on our island, including a taverna and a coffee house. You might be surprised to learn that coffee houses were quite the rage all over Europe and America during this time period, and they were centers of social activity and of political or philosophical discussion. We learned that in Italy, unlike England and other nor northern European countries, women were actually welcome in coffee houses. Our coffee house is the site for our regular coffee house salons, which are discussions of important ideas and events of the 18th century. The discussions are conducted in character from the standpoint of the 1780s, and participants generally receive note cards in advance with quotes from primary sources from the period about the topic under discussion. And I have to say, some of the discussions are quite spirited.
Probably the most visible and prominent of our more formal venues is the Villa Vesuviana. Architecturally, it's closely based on Andrea Palladio's Villa Capra La Rotunda, which is one of the finest examples of late Renaissance architecture in the world. The villa has public rooms on the first floor, including a music room, uh, a dining room, a library, and a parlor or receiving room. We use these spaces for a variety of activities, from poetry readings to parties, and even on one occasion for a recreation of an 18th century phantasmagoria show, complete with a medium who was contacting the spirits of the dead. Of course, there are also cultural locations, one of which is the Academia di Sorrentina, which would not have shown up under Callie's search for libraries in Second Life. But it is, in fact, um, the home of our library, which contains a substantial collection of virtual books and pamphlets published during or before the 18th century. The library also serves as the venue for our periodic book discussions. Relatively recently, we created a second cultural venue, the Amphiteatro. It's based architecturally on a site created during the 17th century by the Arcadian Academy in Rome, the Bosco Parasio. The Bosco Parasio was for many centuries a venue for literary readings and philosophical debates conducted by the Academy. Our amphiteatro hosts musical and other cultural events. Throughout the island, we are, we've scattered many shops, buildings, and artifacts that illustrate what life is like in 18th century Italy. Most of them are listed on this slide and the next one. In each case, we've carefully researched the content, look, and feel of the build. And in many cases, we provide note cards of additional information and references about the business or industry being depicted. The Cabinet of Curiosities, which is the 18th century forerunner of the modern museum, sits on the second floor of the Academia building above our library. It's particularly notable because all of the exhibits it contains give information note cards, many of which use 18th century sources. Now one of the most compelling ways to get people to learn in a virtual environment is to have them act out or extemporaneously role play within a general scenario or situation. Of course, this requires that they get some background about the scenario in advance so that they can participate in a historically plausible way. And they are encouraged to contribute research of their own. In one scenario last year, our residents dealt with a ye yellow fever epidemic that hit the island. Various public venues were closed during the epidemic, and people were asked to self-quarantine to prevent the spread of disease. All of those who participated certainly said that they learned a great deal about health, disease, and medicine during the late 1700s. The role play on our island extends to the ways in which our residents furnish their own residences to reflect the kind of 18th century people they have chosen to portray in our region. And they often hold period appropriate events in their own homes and gardens. Now, one of the primary ways we have of enriching the collaborative learning experience on Rocca Sorrentina is through our exhibits and galleries, which are located up on the region's entry platform. We have one small and one and two larger reconfigurable exhibit spaces there, in addition to wall spaces along the platform. Our rotating exhibits feature the creative work of our own community members and others in Second Life, as well as displays and exhibits about the 18th century. These provide context and background for the activities taking place on the island. For example, one of our residents became interested in architecture and had visited the real Villa Capra La Rotunda in Italy. She developed an exhibit, an in-world book, and a lecture on classical architecture during the late 18th century, which included a comparison of the real and our virtual world visit villa. One of the more successful exhibits, which is still available to be seen, was created by my colleague Jeff in response to a simple question that one of our residents asked him one day. 
Many of our other residents were busy rehearsing and performing Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. But she asked, I wonder what they thought of Shakespeare in the 18th century. From the months of research he was inspired to do in order to answer that question, he created an exhibit called Embracing the Savage, Shakespeare in the 18th Century. It shows how Shakespeare was performed in the 18th century, how it differed from other popular theatrical forms of the time, and how reactions to his work differed from country to country. It's probably not a surprise to you then um, that the exhibit uh, that is on display here was also created from information assembled as background for an event on our island. In 2013, one of our exhibits read a historical account of a real pistol duel that had been fought in 1809 between participants who had been aloft in hot air balloons, and he wanted to do something similar. Naturally, this required some research into balloon flight in the late 18th century, and we quickly discovered that Rocca Sorrentino was at that moment in exactly the same year as the first reported manned balloon flights in history. So as I began to dig into the primary and secondary sources needed to stage a realistic event, I got swept up in the science and the spirit of that era. How did the enormous technological leap come about that permitted people to fly freely in the air like birds for the first time in mankind's history? I channeled that research into the aeronauts exhibit, and in short order, uh, balloon mania swept across Rocca Sorrentino just as it did across Europe in the late, late 18th century. And as you can see from the pictures on these slides, we did indeed have our balloon duel high in the skies over our island. I hope this brief description gives you the flavor of the Rocca Sorrentino project and how we use our virtual environment to explore historical questions. Let me close by thanking my collaborator, Jeff, and his second life alter ego, Aldo Stern, because none of this would have been possible without the two of them. If you've never been to Rocca Sorrentina, please come and visit us sometime. You can get a landmark from this sign right next to the slide viewer here. And after you've heard the other conference presentations, I encourage you to come back and explore the Aeronauts exhibit. You might even take a picture of yourself on the life-size replica of the original Montgolf Montgolfier or hot air balloon that's in the center of the exhibit. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy our show.